Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training where we want to give you the training that you need to tackle projects like this one on your own. Today's training is going to be on a question that comes up in the HVAC field which is why do I need more air for cooling compared to heating? And today we are going to answer that question for you. I am going to do my best to give you the best content possible in the shortest time frame possible and I only ask for you to do one thing for me and that is to smash that like button down for me right now. And with that, let's go on with the show. Okay, so when you do a Google search and you ask the question, why? Do you need more air for cooling than heating? You're going to come up with 386 million results that Google will uh, um, provide. Now, one of the things that Google also states is that does heating require more air flow than cooling? Heating season airflow should be only 65% of the cooling season airflow. And they give you some examples there on uh, cubic feet per minute but it doesn't answer the question as to why. Now, the short answer is because heated air has a larger BTU, which by the way, if you don't know what BTUs are, BTUs are British thermal units. They're a form of heat measurement. Think of a one BTU as the amount of heat that one wooden match would provide. That's approximately one BTU. Um, and so, because heated air has a larger BTU difference than cooled air compared to the space you are heating or cooling. We are going to break that down for you and scientifically show you exactly what I am talking about. Now, here, this is an enthalpy chart. It's a little blurry. It was the best chart I could pull off of the internet. Um, but basically, the point will be, uh, you will be able to um, understand what it is that I'm trying to demonstrate here. So in this enthalpy chart, uh, you'll see that it goes in degrees Fahrenheit. This is dry air in this section, and we're pretty much just going to focus on dry air. And over here in this section over here is uh, mixtures of dry and saturated water vapor. Uh, so that's different moisture contents in the air. But basically, we also want to focus on the heat content, which is the total enthalpy. Now we're going to take two heats into consideration, the sensible and latent heat. Now, I don't want to break that down for you right now, but just understand that when we look at the uh, total heat content, this is how much heat content the air can hold at these specific temperatures, okay? Now, in the summertime, the room set point on our thermostat is approximately, let's just say, 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So this here is the, I broke this section of the table out at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. This is how many BTUs, they, the way that they demonstrate this in an enthalpy chart, this column over here is BTUs per pound of air. So there are 37.81 BTUs in one pound of air at 75 degrees Fahrenheit, which is your room temperature. Now the air that you are feeding into that room, the supply air from your HVAC system is approximately 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So at 60 degree Fahrenheit air, you're going to have 26.18 BTUs per pound of air. Okay, so for the summertime cooling season, we have dry air at 60 degrees Fahrenheit entering the space to be cooled. Oh, and by the way, the reason why I drew this red arrow pointing down is because heat can only be transferred because we're all talking about uh, the transfer of heat here in an air conditioning system. We're just trying to take heat from one place, in this case, inside of the residential home in the summertime and we're trying to transfer it outside because we want to be comfortable in our space and it's let's just say it's very hot outside and we're trying to transfer that hot air that's that's migrating into our house outside so it's all it's all heat transfer but heat can only transfer in one direction 
from a hot body to a cold body can never go the opposite direction. So in the case of cooling, what's happening is, is that the cool air contains less heat than the room air. So the heat is going to be transferred from inside the room to the cold air entering the room until it goes back to the return air system where, where we repeat that cycle. <clears throat> so for the summertime cooling season, we have dry air, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, entering the space to be cooled. The space temperature is 75 degrees Fahrenheit. The total enthalpy of dry air at 75 degrees Fahrenheit, which is this top line here, is 37.81. And the total enthalpy of dry air at 60 degrees Fahrenheit is 26.18 BTUs per pound, because that's the way that the enthalpy chart gives you the information. We want to know that difference between these two items. 37 divided by 26 equals 11.63 um, with the decimal point there is the, is the difference. But you're not going to have that entire difference because once, once you reach equilibrium, you're going to stop heat transfer. So you need to take that number and, and you need to divide it by two. So that is why we took the number, we divided it by two. So you're gonna have a total heat transfer of 5.8 BTUs per pound of heat until you reach equilibrium of the two fluids. In this case, the fluid is air. Now, for the heating season, okay? So this is gonna be in the winter time, you're gonna have your room thermostat set at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. The wintertime supply air, if your system is operating normally, is going to be approximately 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So those are the numbers that we plugged into doing the exact same equation that we did for the cooling season. Now we are going to do that same equation for the heating season. For wintertime heating season, we have dry air at 110 degrees Fahrenheit. That's this air right here, entering the space to be heated. The space is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. The total enthalpy of dry air at 70 is 33.51. And the total enthalpy of dry air at 110 degrees Fahrenheit is 87.69 BTUs per pound. We take that difference, that equals 54.18. That's your difference between those two enthalpies. You will only have heat transfer till both fluids air have reached equilibrium. In this case, it's 54 divided by two, that equals 27.09 BTUs per pound of heat transfer till we have equilibrium. Now, we did the summertime numbers. We know it's 5.8 BTUs per pound till we have equilibrium. On the heating season, you have 27.09 BTUs per pound till we have equilibrium. So if we take those two numbers, we take the larger number divided by the smaller number, that's 4.67. For the heating season, the air has 4.67 times more BTUs of heat transfer compared to the cooling season. This is the reason why you need more airflow for cooling than for heating. If you like the content that you're receiving so far and you haven't done so yet, please smash that like button down for me right now. Thank you. Let's move on. Now, this is a house, a three bedroom house that I did uh, an ACA Manual J study on. Now, if you're not familiar with ACA Manual Js, the Manual J8AE in this case, uh, produces uh, a heat load calculation for the space. You can subscribe to my channel, Ken Training, where you can see where I'm gonna do a full video where I do the, an, an example of doing an ACA Manual J on this residence right here. It's just a three bedroom uh, re, uh, ranch that's uh, located in Texas. Now, um, here is just a summary report of what basically that uh, ACA Manual J is producing for all the different rooms in that space. It tells you how many BTUs per hour of heat loss you have and heat gain you have in the summertime, heat losses in the wintertime. And it's, so it tells you your heating CFMs for each room and your cooling CFMs for each room. But the way that the ACA Manual J produces the information on their speed sheet 
it tells you that it wants 1,000 CFM for heating and 1,000 CFM for cooling. Now, as much as the ACA Manual J is considered the Bible for um, pr producing heat load calculations for the HVAC uh, industry, that doesn't make sense because I just demonstrated to you in this presentation how you need more airflow for cooling than for heating. So what I did was I just broke down and did a couple of different equations and that's these sections over here on this Excel, speed, um, Excel sheet that you see. Now, in this yellow section right here, that is the sensible heat equation. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, I believe this equation right here, if you know what your BTUs per hour and we are in the ACA manual J, absolutely gives you the BTUs per hour of heat loss and heat gain. And it gives, it gives you that number very accurately and very scientifically. That, so I took those numbers and I used this formula to come up with the CFM. And I believe this one to be the most accurate way that you can achieve your CFM, your cubic feet per minute of airflow needed for your heating and for your cooling, okay? So HTG is your heating, CLG is your cooling. The max CFM is when you do your design for your duct work. This would be the uh, column you would use for that. This column in pink, this is the sensible heat formula, which is uh, right here, CFM equals uh, sensible BTU over 1.1, which is a constant times your delta T depending upon what season you're in, heating or cooling. And then uh, over here in the tan column, that's me, Ken Training, coming up with my own formula. Here's my own formula right here, where I, where I actually dissected the, um, the, the uh, sensible heat formula, and I, and I broke that down with the 1.1, and instead I used the exact density for heated air and cooled air. And that's why the numbers are slightly different, different than the uh, sensible heat formula, but they're so close that really doesn't make a difference. But anyways, I'm telling, so this is all your data. Using the most accurate one, which I believe is this formula right here, uh, tells you that for this home right here that I showed you earlier, in the heating season, you're gonna need a total of 510 CFM, and in the cooling season, you're gonna need 1,113 cubic feet per minute to satisfy this space. Now, uh, I have on uh, my website, and I'm gonna leave a link for you at the bottom, which is kentrainingwix.com, and all this here. You can download uh, forms that I have uh, specifically for the HVAC industry. And here are some of the forms that are that are available for free download. No viruses that I'm putting in there, no malware, none of that. These are, this, these are just straight HVAC forms and calculations that if you would like to download them, they're free. You can download them. I'll leave a link for them in the description below. Please feel free to go ahead and explore that and see if it's something you're interested in. But I do have the ACA Manual J 1500 square foot ranch example, and I've got another uh, sheet that I used to help fill in the data. I'm gonna do a full video on this. Please subscribe to my channel to see all of that if you're interested in learning more about heat load calculations. Now, the reason why this is all important is because on your air conditioning control board, you're gonna have two taps, one for heating and one for cooling. And you need to know what wire to place on those taps on your control board. Now, this is a fan uh, performance of a, in this case, it's the manufacturer is a Goodman furnace. There is your model number right there. You can pull that up yourself if you wanted to by going to, uh, Goodman's um, website. But if you look at this model number, you'll, you will see that Goodman provided a choice of one, two, three, four, five taps. Now, I'm just using an example. Let's say that in the cooling season, you wanted 927 CFM. 
And in the heating season, you wanted 724 CFM for that fan to produce with a, going against an external static pressure of 0.7 inches of water column, which is you know, about average, somewhere between 0 0.5, 0 0.7, somewhere in this window. If you know what your exact external static pressure is, you could figure out, you could know exactly uh, which column you need to be in. In our example that I'm providing here, we're just saying it's 0.7 inch. You're going against, the fan is going against an external static pressure of 0.7 inches water column. Now, you want 927 CFM for your cooling season. You need to put on the red tap. And on the heating season, you want to connect the brown lead. So this is the schematic of that exact model number um, Goodman furnace that I showed you. And it shows you the blower wheel, which in this case, the, the blower motor is an ECM, electronically commutated motor. And it tells you, here are your five tap choices. So when you connect these coming over to your control board and you have your heat tap and your cool tap, uh, you can determine what color wire lands on these terminals. And you want to know what your external static pressure is. You want to know what, oops, sorry about that. Did that by accident. You want to know what your CFM is. So this way you know exactly what it is that you're doing. And this is the reason why this is all important because you want to make sure that you put the correct speed for the motor that you're trying to achieve for your system. An HVAC for uh, in a home or in a business or whatever, it's, it's all a system. Now, I have um, at my website on, uh, on YouTube, Ken Training, I have a bunch of uh, videos. You can click on the search section here and you can type in HVAC if you wanna see all the ones specific to HVAC industry. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel and I hope you enjoy those videos. That is going to conclude this video and I hope that I have clearly identified and showed you why you need more airflow for your HVAC system for the cooling season than you do for the heating season. If you got any value out of this video at all, please smash that like button down. Subscribe to my channel, Ken Training. I will catch you on the flip side.